I made a working version of 2048 for PowerPoint. This version of 2048 can do everything from the original game and much, much more. But before we go over how I made this game, let's go over why I made a version of 2048 for PowerPoint. Picture this scenario. You're at work and you've been in the same boring meeting for hours. You're tired and you're bored out of your mind. So how do you escape this boredom? You could stare at the fourth wall and try to break out like this girl. You could also pull out your phone to play 2048. But who wants to pull out their phone, put in the wrong password 10 times before finally getting it right and opening the app? That's way too much work. This is where PowerPoint 2048 comes in. You can simply open it up straight from your office laptop, no need to do anything else, and you're already in a game of 2048. Now, if you're still not convinced PowerPoint 2048 will change the world, I've just got one thing I want to say to you. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> it's kind of a terrible idea. But let's take a second to see how I took this terrible idea and just ran with it. So it turns out that PowerPoint, Excel, and Word all share the same coding language called VBA. Thanks to this coding language, I can automatically move images around, rotate them, and delete them. Basically, I can do any operation needed to make the game work. There are some limitations I have to work with though. The best way to showcase these limitations is probably through an example. So initially I was actually working on Flappy Bird for PowerPoint, but um, let's just say there's a good reason I nicknamed that project Floppy Bird. See for yourself how it turned out. Yeah, so it turns out that VBA can't run any faster than about two frames a second. That means any animation will be really choppy. I guess that sort of makes sense because I don't think any sane human being would actually try and make a game on PowerPoint. So unfortunately for us, this means the game can't have any fancy animation. Luckily though, 2048 doesn't really need to be animated. That being said, I think it's time we start work on the game. The first thing I'm going to do is blatantly plagiarize all the assets from the original game so I don't have to make them myself. In my defense, I don't think I'm the only one who's stolen these images before. There are easily 200 copies of this game on the App Store. Quick side note, I don't think I've ever seen anything have original in its title and actually be the original. Like, why would the first person to make the game ever call it Original 2048? That's like me calling myself the original Code Spooks. It just doesn't make sense because there are no copies of my channel. Alright, my rant's over. Let's get back to the game. Now that I have the images for each number and the board, I can start working on the game's mechanics. The first mechanic I want to work on is placing the images on specific squares on the grid. That's really a core mechanic for 2048, because if we can't move the images around on the grid, then we don't really have a game. So let's just say I wanted to place an image here. For me, it's easy to say that this is the second column of the third row, but for VBA, well... Let's just say VBA is a bit dumb. It can't understand rows and columns. Instead, it needs to have pixel coordinates. But it doesn't handle pixel coordinates like other programs. No, that would be way too easy. Instead of having the coordinates start from the bottom left, like any sensible program should, for some forsaken reason, it chose to start its coordinates from the top left instead. Now, terrible coordinate system aside, to move numbers around, I need to find a way to convert rows and columns into a pixel value. In order to do that, I had to bring out the big guns. That's right, I had to bring out Microsoft Paint. Now, I know what you're wondering. Isn't Microsoft Paint just for drawing? Well, it turns out that in Paint, whenever you hover over something, you get its coordinates in the bottom left. That allows me to get a pixel value for each square. And with this pixel value, I can place a number anywhere I want. So now, I can tell any number to go here, 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 or here. Okay, so now we know how to move the numbers. Big deal. How does this help us in any way with the game? Well, it's the first step that allows us to start sliding the numbers around. For reasons I'll explain a bit later, we'll start by only trying to reproduce the upward slide. The upward slide has two key steps. First, you need to move all the numbers towards the top. Then, you need to merge similar numbers together 
by adding them. Compressing the blocks towards the top is pretty easy. You look at each number, and you check if there's an empty cell above it. If there is, you shift the number upwards. You then have to repeat this for each block until there isn't any gaps between the numbers. Once all the numbers are pushed towards the top, we should have something that looks like this. We're now ready to add the numbers together, but there's still a few tricky scenarios we need to consider. For example, here we have three of the same numbers, one on top of each other. So how do we merge them? Do we merge the bottom two or the top two? Well, after playing the game for 10 minutes in order to figure it out, and playing another two hours to procrastinate, I finally came up with an answer. It depends on the direction of the swipe. If you're swiping up, then the top two will always have priority. This means that the two at the top will combine into a bigger number, while the one at the bottom will stay small and insignificant. So now that we've figured out what to do in those rare scenarios, how do we actually implement it in PowerPoint? Well, it turns out that PowerPoint allows us to copy images and delete them. So in order to combine two numbers together, we first need to delete them. Then, we copy the image of the combined number and place it where the two deleted blocks were. Since both these operations are done at the same time, it'll look like we just added the numbers together. Okay, so once we put all the elements together, we have a very basic version of 2048. Except, in this version, you can only move up. And it turns out that that doesn't make for a very good game. The highest number I've managed to build from this version of the game is 8 and that's pretty far from the values we're supposed to be able to achieve. So how do we get the slide to work in other directions? Well, it turns out that if we just rotate the board, do an upward slide, and then rotate the board back, it'll look exactly the same as if we did a left slide instead. Now, this isn't exactly intuitive, so I'll showcase it with an example. Here, for example, we have two twos that we expect to become a four if we merge towards the left. Now, here's what happens if we step-by-step step, rotate the board, merge upwards, and then rotate it back. As you can see, the result is exactly the same as what we expected with the left merge. Now, I've only showcased a slide towards the left, but the same thing can be done for a right slide or a downward slide. The only thing that really changes is how much we have to rotate the board. Now that the sliding is done for each direction, all that's left for the game is a bit of polish. The first thing I did was binding the slide to an arrow. So now if you click on the upwards arrow, it'll slide upwards. I also added a score and a high score that are simply calculated by adding all the numbers on the board together. Well, there you have it. That's PowerPoint 2048. If you have a presentation coming up, feel free to put 2048 at the end or just have fun playing it on your own time. I've put a link to the download in the description down below. Just keep in mind that you'll have to enable VBA when PowerPoint asks you for everything to work. Now, normally, you shouldn't enable VBA when a random stranger asks you. But I'm a random stranger with a YouTube channel, so you know it's safe. Hey, thanks for watching. This is my first video, so I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a comment on what you liked and what you think I should improve. It would really mean the world to me. Also, subscribe if you want more. I've got an awesome video planned soon, and I really think you guys will like it.